The TV One News is proudly brought to you by. BSP, our bank, our people. Hello and welcome. This is TV One News. I'm Carol Kiru Jr. And I'm Rex Litter. I'll join you later in the Bulletin for Sports. In this edition, no disaster report on Ramu flooding. Ipata Sempundari at loggerheads over attempted arrest. And eight PNG games deferred again. More than three weeks after the people of Ramu were affected by floods, the Medang Provincial Disaster Office is yet to establish the magnitude of the damage and assign costs to it. People here are still waiting for some form of help to come by. It is understood that the national government has released one million kina into the provincial disaster account for relief, but the challenge now is how this money will be used because the disaster office does not have a comprehensive report of the damage. Victims of the Ramu River flooding who have done their own assessments and put forward their reports to the Medan Provincial Disaster Office are not satisfied to learn that the government has allocated only one million kina for relief. The affected areas consist of communities in the upper, middle, and lower Ramu, capturing the middle Ramu, Sumkar, and Bogia districts. According to the assessments, over 20,000 households have been affected, and to date, relief has not reached their doors. Melchior Yeyiri, ward member for Bosmoon in the Yawar local level government, in the Bogia district came into town to submit their report of their assessment. 16 days we've lived in Sumsulabit, Kabangarak. And we want the West flood through. Now, it's still in the Midland. Midland now, over the councils. So, it's because I've been in the world areas. We've been submitting all reports from the Middle Province, the Province of the Last Office. We're asking the Province of the Last Office, now, please, we must pass the team supplies from. Almost 20, he is concerned that no staff from the disaster office had visited them to do assessment and reports, and they have been forced to do reports by themselves in order to attract government attention. Having had the government had made one million kina available for disaster, Mr. Yeyiri hopes the funding is able to sustain them until they are able to rebuild their lives. Unfortunately, Medang Disaster Director Rudolf Mongali stated that the one million kina sent by the national government can only be used to purchase food items and nothing else such as housing materials or kitchenware. He affirmed that funding is already in the account and will be accessed this week for relief work. According to the NEC-appointed Acting Provincial Administrator Daniel Alloy, the funding from the national government came with strict orders of implementation. The funding will be susceptible to an audit after depletion to ensure that the total amount has been used for the purpose and nothing else. Respond. I may give him one million long meeting um, on him, uh, the province now, with the specific instructions that, uh, that, that it is meant for that um, area. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, you cannot spend anything outside of that. Uh, money come, and um, we come on them. Mark long and a low long and a talk. You must spend him to this parents. So, um, money no blow back in back all outstanding the house. The 17 badly affected areas of Yawa LLG by the Ramu River tide surge are Marangis, Kayan, Boroi, Buliwa, Awar, and Bangapela. Susan Oreape, TV One News. 
The United States government through USAID has allocated 3.45 million kina in emergency relief aid to support communities in Papua New Guinea affected by the recent earthquake and flooding. The funding will provide essential assistance including shelter, logistics and sanitation support to those impacted by the disasters. USAID experts are working closely with local partners to ensure a coordinated response. The combined effects of the earthquake and flooding have displaced thousands and damaged numerous homes across the region. USAID reaffirms its commitment to assisting Papua New Guinea in building resilience to natural disasters and climate change. Governor for Anger Sir Peter Ipata said he is willing to go into questioning pending a formal letter from the Commissioner of Police should there be any form of allegations against him. Sir Ipetas made these remarks after attempts were made by the police to arrest him during his arrival at the Jacksons International Airport on Sunday. The governor, Sir Peter Ipetas, is awaiting a formal letter from the Commissioner of Police, David Manning, inviting him for a record interview if police have complaints filed against him. To go and front up. Uh, to the police. I'm not going to be on the run. If there are any evidence that I was involved, and uh, you know, if the commissioner of the, of the police force writes to me, I will turn up. Sir Ipata said the allegations of the arrest, according to the police, relates to the 2022 national general election violence in Kompiam. However, he clarified that the charges were laid against two candidates from his People's Party who contested in the Kumpiam Open and not him. Uh, for me, you know, I, I, I categorically denied that I was uh, involved in that uh, trouble fight. I was involved in the elections. Uh, the candidates I, I, I endorsed uh, in the electorate have now been charged and they're going through the process. The governor is concerned that he has never at any point in his 45-year political career been arrested for committing an offence, and the attempt to arrest him was a surprise. In my career, in the last 45 years, I've never been arrested for anything, or I've never had any allegation of such. And, uh, you know, especially to come to this sort of the time after, you know, when you see how many years I've given to the country. Meanwhile, the Commissioner of Police, David Manning, has refuted Rumors that an attempt was made by police to arrest the governor over the weekend. Manning said police were doing their normal policing duties over the weekend at the Jacksons International Airport when Sir Ipotas arrived at the airport during that time. Tracy Pa, TV1 News. Meanwhile, Sir Peter Ipetas said that the attempt made, by, made to arrest him by the police was influenced by the member for Kompia Mambum, Sir John Pondari, with the aim to destroy his reputation. However, member for Kompia Mambum, Sir P John Pondari, lashed out at Sir Ipetas for naming him and his, has instructed his lawyers to file a defamation lawsuit against Ipetas. was involved in the elections. I was never involved in any trouble, uh, you know, fights as a result of the elections. So I want to tell the country that uh, I have no knowledge about why I was going to be arrested. But the assumption or presumption is that this police who were compromised by Sepundari turned up at the airport to have me arrested because they want to smear my name, my standing as a senior leader of this country. I have further instructed my lawyers to file a separate lawsuit for the defamatory statements made against myself. I must state for the record that I have got no knowledge and have got nothing to do with anyone 
or any persons for that matter, including police personnel who may have been at Seven Mile International Airport when the so-called leader arrived. The PNG Teaching Service Commission has advised teachers throughout the country intending to contest the local level government election or the by-elections to effectively resign from teaching. TSC Chairman Samson Wangihomi in a media conference issued this call for all teachers to take heed. When speaking to the media during a press conference in Port Moresby, the chairman of the PNG Teaching Service Commission, Samson Wangiomi, warned teachers to resign from teaching if they want to contest in the upcoming local level government election or the by elections. Wangiomi issued this warning after several teachers failed to resign to contest in previous elections. There are by elections coming up in the uh, there are by-elections coming up, and if any teacher wishes to take part in the by-elections, you, you better apply for, for resignation uh, under, un, uh, under elections. We will definitely uh, resign you to contest elections. He said teachers have the right under the Constitution to contest in elections, but there are processes to follow. They must adhere to the Section 124 of the Teaching Service Act 1998, which includes submitting a formal resignation letter before the issue of writs, so the TSC is aware that they are free to contest the elections. And you must all you must send copies of these letters to the TSC provincial advisor, to your pro, to your to your um, chairman of uh, to your uh, provincial education board, and of course to the teaching service. Commission, and we will resign you accordingly. Wangiomi further called on teachers who have resigned for this purpose to leave their respective school premises. If it's an LLG election, the thing is this, if a community school teacher, whoever it is that resigns, must immediately leave the school campus. The chairman said if the teacher loses the election, a time frame of two months will be issued to the teacher to apply for reinstatement. Failure to do so will result in termination. To contest elections. But the, but the catch is this. If you lose the election, you must know that you go to, you go to, um, if you want us to reinstate you, that goes to be done two months after the rich are returned. Failure to do so, you will be deemed to have resigned and we will terminate you from that teaching service. Tracy Pa, TV1 News. PNG Power denies 700 million kina claim and Mikeo Dance Group to perform in Hawaii. Those stories and more after the break. Stay with us. Experience a convenient and smarter way to do your banking with BSB Mobile Banking. You don't have to leave the office or your home to pay for bills. You can view your account balance, transfer funds, top up phone credits or purchase easy pay units wherever you are. Visit your BSB branch today to register now for BSB Mobile Banking. BSB Mobile Banking, the smarter way to bank. BSB, our bank, our people. He says the best hunters players come from his region. So does she. But there's one thing that brings everyone together. SB Laga, Bungim Yumi. The Toyota JD High Ace Bus comes in 14 and 15 seater, high roof luxury model, powered by 2.8 liters JD engine for optimal performance output, fuel efficiency and quietness, designed with improved safety features and easy maneuverability for tire steering angle. The High Ace lift lift suspension and annular frame structure is opted for smooth ride, comfort and safety. Experience the ride on the High Ace Bus and experience the High Ace Pride, the bus that exceeds all expectations. Hiya, Mama. You wait time, but me add him special flavor. Put him more flavor, put him more taste. Magic a karaoke up and big smile on face. Time for him chicken, a great food too. Sip sip the moo moo, yes, magic on you. 
Maggie the taste PNG loves. All Mama Flame is story all Sam. Miss Sam, you seen flame flower long one M. Yeah, Miss Sam, you came kai belong family belong me. You go more yet. Man belong me, Sam, like him flower balls belong me. What them flower water na spring ania. All picking ini belong me, Sam, like him to my pineapple donut. Miss Sam, we walk him low house. Me make kumu mix him one time kiau na karama him long flower. Tasty hash browns. Time Miss Kelly one time allar fella kai kai. Miss Sam, we kiss him more kai kai long. All get a toya me throw more one time flame flower. You in a baking more one time flame flower. Charging forward, Shea Bonson, a oh, magnificent kick, so easy. Welcome back. PNG Power Limited has denied claims that it owes independent power producers money in excess of 700 million kina, as claimed by IPPS on one of the dailies. Chairman of PNG Power, McRonald Nale, while acknowledging that PPL owes IPPS monies, he said the electrical bills owed to IPPS is less than 700 million kina, as reported. According to the news article, IPP Group Chairman David Burbridge claimed that PNG Power owes IPP 700 million kina. He added that PNG Power does not have cash flow and working capital to pay suppliers, leading to PNG Power's cost rising and revenue going backwards. PNG Power Chairman McRonald Nale confirmed in a statement that PNG Power owes less than 700 million kina. This is an inclusive of the capital recovery costs, interest costs and other charges on top of the energy bill. He added that they are disputing some of the invoices from the IPPs and will engage with individual IPPs to resolve these issues individually as per their power purchase agreements. To verify these costs, this new team reached out to Chairman Nale, however did not receive a response at the time of running this story. The IPPs include New Power, Dirio, Poscole, PNG Forest Products Hydro, Edevu, PNG Hydro Development, and New Britain Palmoy Limited. Nale added, saying despite the conditions, PNG Power is still able to operate with the support of the government, KCH, and other partners to improve power reliability in the country. Despite the disagreements between PPL and the IPPs, PNG Power does value the contributions of the IPPs as important stakeholders, playing a major role in providing generation for major grids. Jasmine Nero Jack, TV1 News. Head of the world's biggest gold miner, Newmont, met with Prime Minister James Marape yesterday in his first official visit to Papua New Guinea. Recently appointed President and Chief Executive Officer of Newmont, Tom Palmer paid a courtesy call on Prime Minister Marape at his office in Sermana Super House to update him on his visit to the country. Palmer's visit is primarily to Newmont's mining sites to understand the operations better, in line with the company's new plans for 2024 going forward. Prime Minister Marape thanked Palmer and assured him of his government's commitment to work with the developer in all its projects covering Lihir and Wafi Golpu. Marape also commended Palmer and Newmont for heeding several of his recommendations, including getting PNG to have its own operation in reference to Newmont's worldwide business portfolio and engaging in the conversation on initial public offering at the Port Mosby Stock Exchange to open up the stock market to Papua New Guineans. Tuesday's conversation also touched on temporary solutions for the current fuel shortage for the mine's operations, corporate tax revenue from Lihir, 
and local ownership content in Lihir Mine come the next review of the mining contract in 2035. Newmont has significant investments in the country including Wafi Gopu and Lihir Gold Mines. In April 2023, Prime Minister Marape said the state and PNG will be the biggest winners in the Newmont Rand Wafi Gopu mine in Morbe with a 55% take in economic benefits in the project. Meantime, Newmont's Lihir operations is expected to generate an annual pre tax synergy of about 1.7 billion kina, expected to be achieved within the first 24 months together with at least 7 billion kina in cash improvements through portfolio optimization in the first two years of the closing of the new Mont acquisition of Lihir. Marisila Kelaton, TV1 News. Markham District Administrator Bohage Bebinaso has defended the naming of the newly opened district office at Mutsing Station, Morabe Province. Unlike other districts, the new building worth over 3 million kina was named the Koni Iguan House after the incumbent MP and chairman of the Markham District Development Authority. The new Markham District office named the Koni Iguan House was officially opened by Prime Minister James Marape on Friday, March 29th at Muzing Station in Morobe Province. Makam District Administrator Bohage Bebinaso said the first contractor did not complete the building, so a second one, lay builders and contractors, was contracted at 3.5 million kina to complete the state-of-the-art double-story administration building. Funding was from the Department of National Planning and Monitoring and the Makam District Development Authority. The name Kony Iguan House did not go down well with a good number of locals who took to social media to question why the building was named after an individual when public money was used. District Administrator Baby Naso said this is because it is the first time such a development took place under the leadership of the second term MP and Deputy Speaker of Parliament. Well, the name, it's not his doing. The MP is not his doing. It's the doing of the DDA members. Uh, that uh, a structure like this uh, has never been delivered in the past. So somebody has not uh, been pursuing that kind of discussion to see those changes come. So under the current leader, they wanted to see, they have seen the change. So I think it's uh, worth recognizing and making him, uh, making, uh, uh, naming the building after his name, DDA members. The DDA members unanimously agree that the name, it must be named after the current MP. He made the changes, he delivered. Close to 5 million kina was spent on the construction of the district office, while landscaping was undertaken by RN Sons Constructions for 2.7 million kina. Meantime, funding received from the District Services Improvement Program from 2017 to 2022 amounted to approximately 42 million kina. Makam MP Kony Iguan said the funds were used for infrastructure, health and education programs over the five-year period. Kamala Gware, TV1 News, Lei. More than 1,000 people were fed a meal and given store foods and clothes to take home on Easter Sunday. They were part of a special Remember Me event run by the Universal Church in celebration of the risen Saviour. It is estimated that the homeless population in the nation is over 5,000 homeless children. The government and charities working in this city say that migration from rural to urban areas are a leading cause for the rise in homelessness. Universal Church in PNG came into the country just a few years ago, but it has identified physical needs such as feeding the homeless as one important part of society. On Easter Sunday, the PNG Universal Church fed a crowd that turned up for its Remember Me program and what better day to feed the hungry. Senior Pastor Jonathan Pine said the Unisocial distributed food packages to at least 1,000 adults and young children. It was described as one of the largest Unisocial events seen since the program began. Pastor Jonathan said the special event was to commemorate what the Lord Jesus did on the cross 
when he forgave the thief on the cross and promised him a place in paradise. Those who came were given a chance to pick second-hand clothes, get free health checks, and were also given some self-care treatment. The National Cultural Commission is confident in the readiness and commitment of a traditional dance troupe hailing from the Veifafa village in the Mekeo area of Kairuku District, Central Province, Papua New Guinea. The group has been selected as one of four cultural representatives in invited by the NCC to participate in the prestigious 13th Festival of Pacific Arts and Culture, or PACFEST, to be held in Hawaii from June 6 to the 16th, 2024. Designated to represent the southern region, the Veifa Art Dancers join three other distinguished groups from across Papua New Guinea. These include representatives from Siasi in Morabe province for the Momasi region, a troupe from Kaviang representing the New Guinea Islands region, and dancers from Simbu representing the Highlands region. Head of the NCC Stephen Kilanda expressed his satisfaction after receiving a detailed report from cultural officers dispatched to Vefa A village to assess the group's preparedness firsthand. Kilanda commended the dedication of the Vefa A dancers and noted the full support extended by Central Governor Rufina Pita, ensuring the troops' representation of the province, the region and the nation. Representing the National Cultural Commission, Executive Manager David Time, in his address, assured the people that his presence there was to confirm the group's participation for the upcoming PACFest in June. As the primary government agency overseeing arts and cultural affairs, NCC is orchestrating the participation of a Papua New Guinean contingent of arts and cultural ambassadors at the PACFest. Established in 1972 by the South Pacific Commission, now Pacific Community SBC, the festival serves as a vibrant platform for indigenous Pacific Islanders to showcase their rich heritage, thereby safeguarding traditional practices through ongoing cultural exchanges. And now to the finance news. The Kina closed lower at 0.2648 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, our Kina was buying 0.2573 US dollars, 39.21 Australian dollars, 0.2314 euro, and 38.68 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, Gold, coffee, copra and crude oil closed higher, cocoa closed lower and palm oil and copper closed the day unchanged. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed lower, the ASX closed lower and all ordinaries closed lower as well. You're watching TV1 News. We'll have stories from abroad after these messages. Stay tuned. Experience, a convenient and smarter way to do your banking with BSB Mobile Banking. You don't have to leave the office or your home to pay for bills. You can view your account balance, transfer funds, top up phone credits or purchase easy pay units wherever you are. Visit your BSB branch today to register now for BSB Mobile Banking. BSB Mobile Banking, the smarter way to bank. BSB, our bank, our people. A true champion is measured by their courage, their determination, and their passion to never give up and to always keep trying. With a delicious Milo and Milk taste and added nutrients, Milo and Milk is a great way to fuel our little champions with nourishing energy every day. Because true champions give it their all. Milo, PNG and Mia, buying PNG made. Right across the nation, we eat snack scrappers. Mmm, mm. emi trubla. All get a young planalapun, only like him snack scrappers. Only make him here, mm. no PNG, one time lay biscuit company. It's crunchy and tasty. 
it's irresistible. Attention rice lovers, we are giving away 300,000 kina worth of scale school money. 1,000 kina could be yours. With 300 winners and 4 fortnightly draws, your chances are higher than ever. Buy any 1kg to 20kg scale or ori rice, cut out the ground for PNG stamp, put it in an envelope with your name, contact details, and drop it in an entry box at selected outlets. Promotion ends March 29, 2024. Hurry and win big with scale and ori rice. Follow us on social media for more details. Terms and conditions apply. Hardware House is more than just a store. It is where quality meets affordability. Where culture is proudly celebrated. Spanning nine provinces, we pride ourselves in offering top-notch customer support and services. We're more than just a store. We're more than a brand. We are Hardware House. dead folks, reptile plagues, it's not natural. It's a cult that has long ties to Gotham. We mean to give this city purpose and honor the damnation which bore it. Bruce Wayne must die. Ah! And through death, become this city's savior. Batman, the doom that came to Gotham. Premieres Friday, April 12th, 10 p.m. on... Welcome back. Turning overseas, at least four people have been killed and buildings have collapsed after Taiwan was struck by its most powerful earthquake in 25 years. It was shaking very violently. All the motorcycles outside our house toppled over. So I quickly switched off the gas and the electrical source and opened the main door. It was very strong. I felt as if the house was going to topple. It was shaking like this quite strongly. Maybe an earthquake hasn't happened in a long time. So it felt really terrifying. When I realized it was an earthquake, I quickly put on my clothes and shoes. Then I dragged the kid with me and ran down the stairs. I didn't bring anything else with me. Banks are being put on notice about their treatment of customers struggling with their debts. Calls to the Financial Complaints Authority from customers in distress have risen by 25% in just 12 months. Fixed term loan expired, Memfox's mortgage repayments shot up $1,200 a month. I was really thinking about this all the time. It became a very stressful period of my life. The academic went to her local bank branch for help, but was told to fill out a generic online form instead. She never heard back. I was effectively cut loose by the bank to just go and um, survive and struggle on my own. Starting to feel overwhelmed. She's one of a growing number of Australians unable to access hardship help when they ask their bank for support. New data from the Financial Complaints Authority for 2023 shows a 25% rise in financial difficulty complaints. A third were about home loans. It's not just banks that we're talking about. We're talking about credit card companies. We're talking about other lenders, including payday lenders. Meanwhile, calls to the National Debt Helpline have gone up 17%, mostly due to mortgage stress and rental arrears, while small business debt calls grew 82%. People are calling in because of cost of living pressures. We're seeing people just absolutely drowning and overwhelmed at the moment. The regulator says financial institutions are sending cookie cutter responses, despite national codes which mean they should tailor hardship help to individuals. In over half of all cases, they've not even had a response. And that is, of course, a breach of lenders' obligations and something we're very concerned about. A good hardship response can mean the difference between a person's financial situation spiralling out of control and people getting things back on track. If hardship complaints continue, lenders face fines or even litigation. The first group of police officers have been deployed as part of a new rolling youth crime crackdown in Queensland. A broader crackdown on youth crime across Queensland. We've had a number of high profile incidents in recent years and months, including the death of an Ipswich woman earlier this year, Vileen White. She was a grandmother, she was doing her groceries when she was alleg allegedly stabbed to death by a teenager, and that really struck a chord 
in the hearts and minds of a lot of Queenslanders. Look, this is not the first operation of its kind. We've heard a number of youth crime task force rolled out in recent years and they generally take a tough on crime approach. Now this operation, Operation Whiskey Unison, it's targeting hotspot, crime hotspots in regional areas across the state. They've started in Ipswich and Logan. Queensland Police this morning confirmed they've arrested two teenagers and charged them with various property and drug offences. And they're targeting things like property, crime, drug, uh, and also weapons offences as well before moving on to other regional areas. Now, staffing, staffing, we don't know a lot of information about the number of police officers involved in this operation. It's been a bit of a contentious issue, to be honest, because staff will be diverted from their regular jobs and then put into this operation. Uh, we know that Queensland Police is struggling to recruit staff and insiders have raised concerns about that. Uh, now, I mean, this is a really big topic in Queensland youth crime. It's um, you're coming up to the Queensland state election later this year and it's an issue that politicians are discussing, you know, every second day or so. So really, you know, our eyes are on what's going to be happening in the next few months with youth crime, but no doubt we'll be hearing more about this operation in coming months. And that ends the news segment. Join Rex later after the break for sports. Go beyond the familiar. Don't let bacteria hold you back from experiencing the world. <laughs> Protex uses natural antibacterial protection with flaxseed oil and eliminates 99.9% .9 of bacteria. Free yourself. Go beyond with Protex. This honking is doing all head in. Why don't you go and put a stop to it? Oh, maybe not. Bing, bang, bing. Bing, bing, bang. Want more data for less? Get it now with Digicel's revamp Red Club. Enjoy data bundles from as low as one kilo per gigabyte. Plus rollover data, the widest coverage, faster speeds, and best reliability. Only with Red Club. Join Digicel's exclusive Red Club today and get loads more data for less. Yes! Data bundles from as low as one kilo per gigabyte. Whoa! Join today for as low as 10 kilo weekly to access discounted data bundles and get more more data for less. Now star six and five hash or visit the My Digicel app today. The Red Club. Only with Digicel. family are taking the ultimate risk. There's no investors, there's no third party. We're paying for it ourselves. We have to find some good trade. The stakes are high. Ah, Joshua! And every decision is their own. Time and money is everything. That's how important it is. Hit it! Okay, rush, 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 move, move, move. It's all or nothing. If we don't mine this year, we have no next year. Jade Fever, streaming now on Outdoor. Scores the try. Well, it's up to Zephyr and the Barrett's campaign this afternoon. There you go.
welcome back. The much anticipated 8th PNG Games, now renamed PNG Unity Games, scheduled to take place in Mandy's Southern Highlands province in September, has once again been deferred to June 2025. This follows a decision by the National Executive Council. Chief Executive Officer of PNG Sports Foundation, Albert Veritao, made announcement at the press conference in Port Moresby today. Veritao said the decision to defer the PNG Unity Games was reached by the national government, taking into account important factors that would contribute to the success of this game, from finance to security, to venue and to preparation of the provincial teams. Games in the Southern Islands province. That includes Mendi, Nipa, and Yalibu and Kagua. So that 270 covers both completion of the infrastructures, costs uh, for the operations of the host organizing committee, and then hosting of the games by the uh, PNG Sports Desk, and of course the um, caring for the athletes, officials, accommodations, uh, a bit of subsidy for the transportations to and from, uh, but more so a huge uh, cost uh, of security. <coughs> security includes both uh, police, the defense force, and also some private securities where uh, required. And finally, they approved to defer the PNG Unity Games to June 2025. Dika Towa, the veteran weightlifter from Papua New Guinea, has fallen short of securing her sport in the Paris Olympic Games during the final qualification event in Phuket, Thailand. Despite delivering an impressive performance, totaling 171 kg, Toa was edged out by her rival, the Madagascan Renafisirian, who clinched the last qualification sport with a 172 kg total. Underrated, Toa remains determined to continue her journey in weightlifting, eyeing future competitions and holding on to hope for a universality place. The Host Plus Cup returns to action in round four this weekend after a break for the Easter long weekend. For the SPPNG Hunters, they kick off their round four campaign on the road Saturday against Tweed, C Tweed Head Seagulls in Brisbane. Hunters coach Paul Iton has announced his 18 man squad for this trip, including debutant Alan Alex Max, Tony Warrod, and Benjamin Court. The PNG Hunters aim to maintain their decent early season form when they travel to Queensland to meet Tweed Head Seagulls at the Piggy Bin Sports Complex Brisbane on Saturday. After the Easter break, the Hunters have regrouped and are back to their normal training routine this week, while Coach for Leighton would like to maintain a bit of consistency in the team week in, week out, injuries and suspensions are inevitable. However, with no games last week, Everybody is fighting fit to keep their sports on the team, except for Robert Matthias and Valentine Richard, who remain excluded due to visa issues. This paves the way for Alex Max to make his debut in 17, while Benjamin Court returns for his first game of the season at the back row in number 12. Junior Rob also comes in to the side at prop, and another returning hunter, Tony Warrod, is the 18th man. The rest of the team is as per program. Back, we're back into, uh, we gave the first part of the week off, gave them three days off, then we just started pick up training again, and uh, this is just a normal week for us, leading into like we were prior, for rounds one to three. So it's the same same build up, uh, we've got um, a couple of boys back in, in the squad, obviously Valentine and Robert Matias can't travel, which opens up space for other boys, so, uh, so we've had to manage them because they have a short turnaround since they played Sunday. So they've got a six-day turnaround, so we're just managing them. But as you can see, they have the bibs on out there. But, but uh, they, I think they're pretty happy to play. 18 men. Yep, 18 men. So um, we've included uh, Junior Rob will start up front. 
Uh, we've got Benji Cott in at uh, left edge back row. But um, Anthony Warrior at 18 and making his debut is Alex Max at 17. I mean, th there's definitely a always something to work on. Uh, I feel uh, uh, Josh Lau and Finley Glare have that combination from their la Lace Next Tigers days, and you can see that um, in how they play around each other, which is really good. And um, I mean, it's new for Sakis as well to have, you know, have a pairing with with Josh. So uh, Jamie played his first game uh, against Wigmen on the weekend. So he's, I think, he'll be available for selection. Uh, next week. Coach Adrian said while two in heads remain winless after the opening three rounds, they won't be taking any team lightly from here on and would use this weekend's class to test out their character and resilience. Yeah, they're sitting at the bottom, but um, but as a, again, they're, they're a quality side. Uh, they're affiliated with uh, an NRL club, so we're expecting a good quality team. Um, where they're sitting now definitely doesn't re reflect to the, uh, the team that they are. It's early in the season, so we're expecting a tough, tough hit out. And while it's good news for Hunter's star fullback Moria Moria back on the training paddock with the boys, Coach Aiton again said he's not rushing to commit the young prodigy to full contact yet until cleared by the physio. Yeah, it's really good to see him. Really good to see him out there. So he's out there training. Um, it's really good to have him out there. I think he's at 80% at the moment, from what I've told. So um, it's good to have him there and around the group. After round three, the PNG Hunters currently sit at the seventh place on the points table with two wins and one loss. After the Tweeds game this weekend, the Hunters will have a bye in round five before they host Dolphins in round six on the 20th of April at home, Santos National Football Stadium. Terry Longwood, TV One Sports. Underrated late Tigers number six and PNG Hunters backup spine player Joshua Mire is no slouch when it comes to embracing challenges in his second season in the host Plast Cup. Mira had his first game of the season in round three against Sunshine Coast Falcons coming off the bench where he was slaughtered straight into the main engine room at second row and took the challenge with both hands. The young Simbu rising star is not shying away from the challenges of competing for starting sports in the Hunters team, especially the number six position currently occupied by Sakias Komati. After a breakout 2022 season with his local franchise Lace Next Tigers and picking up the top point scorer award, Mire made his debut for the Hunters in 2023 along with the Barry Sensation and 2022 Player of the Year Moria Moria Jr. Mira has been used by coach Paul Ayton as the fringe player coming off the bench and now embracing his new role as a utility player. After being the 18th man in the two opening rounds of the new season, Mira was promoted to the bench in 17 and came on as a reserve forward and he took it as a learning curve as he contemplates a transition to the forward pack given there's so much competition for sports in the back five. Um, now I think me glow. I think me get used to Liglo. Some of the roles as a forward. Mostly me study career blooming as a half. Coming as a forward um, it's been hard. I have to kind of some some really good Santina basics and left to some right so you know that play make a work done by a little bit team so yeah all right plenty competition to play the good old young goal forwards come so but look every week I'm kind of some team and stuff straight them ups and downs come up some of the new boys come in a kind of some so while the honours is always on players to prove to the coach what they are capable of in terms of hard work and commitment to reach standards, Mire said no one owns a birthright to the 17th sport in the team and have to earn it on merit. He said the challenges are never ending with new boys coming in every year, but so far the boys are gelling well. Kind of some no one was in the no better right than that. So just see every week you have to fight for it. So. Do you, do you respect the senior boys or staff? Um, kind of um, something we um, have to prove him the coach so we play in him so we play him, you know, or back you not in so. As a all focus, we play him just start the game, we play at all, not too much about tweets. When I say no make him not come, we play just focus so our when I say no coaches we play like him so. Mire also shared some of his own experiences about travelling for away games and the challenges that come with it. Moving forward, Mira is determined to give this season a really good crack, regardless of what position the coach puts him at, prop, lock, winger, is ready to take it with both hands. Being his second season in the Hunter system, 
there's a shift in mindset for Mire, who is stepping up this year as one of the leaders in the group to mentor the new boys joining the camp this year. Terry Longwood, TV One Sports. Climate change is having a significant impact in the Pacific region, and 10 member associations will gather for a FIFA, rather FIFA workshop focused on infrastructure and facilities. The Pacific region, with its prevalence of low-lying islands, is especially vulnerable to climate change. Football is not immune and is affected at all levels. But at the same time, it can also play a role in helping to draw attention to climate change. With climate change in mind, 10 OFC member associations will gather in Papua New Guinea on Tuesday 9th April to commence a two-day FIFA football infrastructure and facilities maintenance workshop. The aim will focus on safeguarding facilities and ensuring that accessibility and sustainability components are part of the program during the construction of member association facilities. In 2022, FIFA and the Pacific Island Forum signed a memorandum of understanding covering several areas which included leveraging opportunities for climate resilient football development in the Pacific region. Papua New Guinea Football Association General Secretary Gordon Manup says that the impact of climate change had resulted in numerous challenges. We've had increased adverse weather in terms of increase in temperature, which impacts on we never used to have cooling breaks. Now we have a lot of cooling breaks during our matches. Uh, the cost of getting water to the fields for the teams that participate has increased. Our country is uh, the first country that has climate change refugees. We have one of our islands, the Cataract uh, Atolls, that is actually underwater and about 1,700 people from that island are being moved to the mainland, uh, to Bougainville. Uh, and that's how damaging um, climate change is for us. Manub says the sport is expanding across PNG and facing the challenges of weather changes that is impacting how football is played in the country. He believes the 11 countries under the OFC are facing similar climate effects. Given football's unique ability to be a change maker, FIFA has continued to strengthen its re requirements and programs related to environmental protection, particularly over the past decade. This commitment has translated into concrete actions to protect the planet in particular around FIFA's flagship events. Susan Oreape, TV1 Sports. Well, that's all we have in sports. Carol. Thank you, Rex. And now the weather forecast for the next 24 hours. Southern region, Port Moresby, partly cloudy with possible few showers. Kerama, Alatau and Papaneta, few showers and possible thunderstorms. Mumase lay partly cloudy with few showers. Medang, Wewak and Vanimo partly cloudy with possible few showers. New Guinea Islands, Lorengau brief showers. Kokopo partly cloudy with possible brief showers. And Buka possible brief showers. Highlands, Mount Hagen partly cloudy with few showers and possible thunderstorms. All other centers, rain showers and possible thunderstorms. Ocean forecast. Coral Sea sees moderate with southeast winds of 10 to 20 knots. Solomon and Pacific Ocean sees slight with northeast winds of 10 to 15 knots. Coastal waters forecast. Waters of southern PNG and Indonesian border to Daru, to Kiwai Islands, Kerama to Yule Island, Hood Point to Samari Islands. Waters of Cape Vogel to Huon Gulf to Finchafen, Waters of New Island to Bougainville and waters of East New Britain to West New Britain seas 0.5 to 1.3 meters. Waters of Samari Island to Cape Vogel and all Milling Bay Islands seas 1 to 1.5 meters. And that's been another edition of TV1 News. Pleasant viewing. Good night. The TV1 News was proudly brought to you by Be a 
GSP, our bank, our people.